Good morning, good evening, wherever you are people. I am delighted to be back for another season and I'm delighted to be joined by Chris Hamilton of Teen Sumweb. We are here to preview the Tour Down Under. Chris, how are you getting on? Yeah, really good, mate. It's uh, hard not to be when you're back in Oz. Um, but nah, all, all is well here and it's uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Now, uh, how's your winter been? Obviously, you've been home, so you had a good block of training. Yeah, I've kind of had too much winter myself, um, but it's uh, yeah. The, I mean, it, yeah, the off season, everything's been great. Of um, training thing going really good. We had uh, we had a camp in Calpe not too long ago, so I guess I got a little bit of a taste of almost cold weather there. Um, but yeah, everything. Uh, Everything's been going smoothly and yeah, put in a lot of work for this, so yeah, excited to see what happens. Now, most people, they don't really want to talk about the sprint stages. We'll cut straight to the chase, which is the brand new stage, uh, the lap circuit in Uredla, which replaces the lap circuit in Stirling, which is a, a new lap circuit and has got most riders, fans, really kind of interested. I noticed on Strava you've done a recon. What, what do you think of this lap circuit? That's going to be a hard day. Yeah, that, uh, we were kind of expecting it to be a bit kind of like um, Sterling, I guess, the circuit's there. Because you look on it on a profile and it doesn't really look too much. Like, yeah, it just looks like a few rollers and like quite a flat. Yeah, I mean, if you just looked at the parkour, you'd say, oh, yeah, sprint stage, like just like Sterling. But um, no, we... Uh, there's, yeah, that's going to keep us pretty honest, I think. There's a, there's just a lot of small, steep climbs. Like, some of them, will, I mean, obviously it was quite hard yesterday. When you're not in a big bunch, you don't have the momentum and stuff, so you really notice every single little climb. But I think at race pace, it'll be, you, there'll be a few that you get over without too much stress, but, yeah, there's just as many that are, that are going to string the bunch out, and there's a lot of corners and, um, and it's predicted to be quite hot as well, I think. So it'll be, yeah, it'll be a GC day, basically. GC day and Sagan? Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Now, people might remember the town because Sagan won there last year, which was small bunch. I think you were, you've been in the front group. Sagan won the sprint, but this, the lap circuit's not the same. The big climb isn't there. I have heard that some of the uphill might be taken out because you hit it quite quick. Is that the case? Um, the, well, the, the finish is exact. The last 1.7K is exactly the same. So we turn onto that road and then go down the hill uh, to the finish line just like we did. But you come from the other direction, basically. Um, and then, yeah, I think the... Yeah, we we did the we did the run into the climb, uh, the run into the circuit, uh, the opposite way. So, um, but yeah, I'm not I'm not sure about having a descent or something taken out. No, I mean some of the some of the steep climbs you're coming down into them from a, a kind of descent, so you're getting a nice bounce. Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. No, that's that's true. Yeah, um, yeah. So the, yeah, there'll be quite a yeah there'll be quite a few rollers like that. There won't be too much trouble, but. Um, I think it's yeah, it's just going to be a day that yeah, battle like a yeah, just of attrition really, and and because uh, it it's, it won't be like properly fatiguing, like you won't really know you're on a, doing a lot of work sort of thing, but it'll it'll take a lot of uh, it'll take a lot out of you. Yeah, and there's not many stages in January that have three thousand five hundred meters of climbing and one hundred and fifty kilometers That's of a race. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's uh, it's quite ridiculous, but I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> now, you've mentioned there it, it's most likely going to be a GC day, which means that this Tour Down Under will have three, which I think is the probably the first time ever really it had three proper kind of GC days. The next one up is the return of the Corkscrew Road Climb, uh, which has been missing, sadly, for a couple of years. You, you did it in... 2016 was it when you were with writing for the uni sa team uh, so yeah no 
Yeah, your... we did that yesterday. And, um, well, we did. It, we tried. We tried to do it yesterday, but we did it the day before that as well. There was actually a car on fire. Uh, one of the hairpins when we went up there yesterday, so that was quite exciting. Um, yeah, just because just we wanted to look at the descent again. Um, but, yeah, the corkscrew itself, yeah, it, it's a really cool climb because it's so short uh, and so steep that the, um, yeah, just all the crowds and stuff that, that, that jam into that little valley is really cool. And um, But, yeah, what, like, one of the more crucial points is that is the run into that gorge road. Um, if we're lucky, it'll be a it'll be a headwind, and it won't be too chaotic. But yeah, if it's if it's not, if there's not much wind, or if it is if it is a yeah, tailwind, um, coming around those corners, you're doing like 80, 90 k an hour, and everyone wants to get to the little bridge first, so you can uh, be in the front turning up because it's also quite a narrow road. So yeah, that's um, that's one point in my cycling career that I remember just being genuinely terrified on my bike. <laughs> <laughs> you did okay that day. Was it second you were in the second group, weren't you? Yeah, I think I was in the main in the main group. Yeah. I had um yeah. I had um I, yeah, Pat Shaw looking after me that day. I remember I'd cut on the run in into the yeah, he was the he was the captain for the UniSA team, so a wise, a wise man to look after you. Uh, now, I mean, it's it's relatively short the climb, but as we've seen in previous editions, it really does, it really does hurt. And normally, we get a group of maybe sometimes it's three, five, ten who kind of go away. If you've got a bad day that day, GC is over, isn't it? It is, yeah, and. Um Yes, yeah, it, it it also yeah, it, it I guess it also depends a little bit on what the wind is doing on the other side because if you're in a small group, um, and no one really wants to work or anything like that, you can get brought back by the next one quite easy. Which is I remember what happened that year. Um, there were kind of people everywhere, and then by the bottom of the, that that descent, all of a sudden, where it's just a group of twenty guys, just from people trying to just catching other people and 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 uh, so. Yeah, if, if uh, maybe you can go solo from the top if you or hold. Yeah, I mean it's been done before, I imagine. But uh, yeah, it just depends on what the people in your group want to do. Remind me about the descent. My, my mind tells me it's not that technical, but it's quite fast. No, yeah, it's really fast. Um, there's a few tight corners at the top, um, but it's it nothing. It's nothing to too bad especially like i mean in training it's fine and then especially in the race with open roads and stuff the the gravel is a bit um it gets a bit like sticky uh when also when it's hot um at the top so it's which isn't always such a bad thing but it can take a bit of a ner- it can take a bit of nerve off you um when you're trying to go fully on your limit and there's bits of gravel and stuff flicking up and whatever so but no it's, it's not a bad descent. Now, the, the two GC stages we've mentioned already, it's a great time for those who have a fast finish, but also a GC rider. We've got a lot of them here. Empey, defending champion, Haas, McCarthy, Elise. There's quite a few of these guys who can sprint fast. Is, is that a kind of worry if you're looking at the GC, you're looking at some of these guys who are going to pick up bonus seconds, and as we've seen in the past, bonus seconds win this race. Yeah, it's um, yeah. We definitely looked into it. Uh, the bonus seconds are definitely a tricky one for me. Uh, just not having the the sprint to match those guys if it, if it needs to come down to going for them out on the road. Um, so yeah, it's it's more or less for just getting the best result possible in the bunch finishes, even in the sprint days, because it it can come down because, like you said, in past times. It, has, it is so close that it, it can come down to your overall finish position as well. So, yeah, if you, you if you do one day finish, you know, don't take too much care and finish 60th or something in a bunch kick, you know, you can just throw the race away just from just from losing a few positions like that. So, yeah, for me it'll be uh, about keeping an eye on, on being up there as much as possible I can in them and just hoping I've got um, – it can do enough damage on days like Belonga and and 
and to, to hold off a few of those fast guys, but we'll see. Speaking of Wollonga, we'll look at it now. So we've got the Queen stage, which is Wollonga Hill. This season, uh, the organisers have decided to change it, and this is now going to be the final stage, which is which is good. I like I like that move. I don't think it's going to change the race very much, but it makes it more exciting. You're going to know who wins the race that day rather than the circuit in Adelaide. I mean, Wollonga on paper, it doesn't look that hard, but when I'm sitting watching the TV and watching you guys go up it, it looks a nightmare. What's it like? Yeah. Well, it is, I mean, it, it is funny. It's, it's not, it, yeah, like you said on paper, it's it's not much of a climb. And then, but uh, I guess it's just the fact of how hard and uh, how hard we just, <laughs> we have to go off it. Um, and also it's, um, yeah, I mean, being, being on the last day, I guess guys have an extra race day in the legs and stuff like that. But yeah, like you said, it, I don't think it'll, that, that should affect things too much, but it's, um, yeah, I don't know, just the, the three kilometers, it's, it's not that long. So you think you can go pretty hard from the bottom, but then top's always a little bit further away than you think it is. And yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool hill actually. And they with the crowds, and I remember last year when Port attacked Standards. I mean, what's he won it now? Five years on the trot, and McCarthy, nice. McCarthy tried to go with him, and he was the only one that tried. And then he blew fairly spectacularly, finished about nearly thirty seconds down. I suppose that's the yep. risk, isn't it? If you're going to go at Richie pace, you might end up thirty seconds to a minute away. What's 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 normally the strategy? Is it stay in that kind of main group, stay in the wheels as long as you can? Um, yeah, more or less, and then following attacks for with you know within the last kilometer or so, because um, that, that's when a lot of guys start to move. Um, we thought it would be a bit different because there were a lot of rumors going around that Richie wasn't racing this year, so um, I think that would have changed things up a bit. There would have been. Uh, less guys looking at, you know, one guy and then maybe people trying some new moves and stuff. But um, there's also the risk of uh, crosswinds into the, running into the base of it. Uh, every year it seems to be that there's not much wind during the day or whatever and then as soon as you turn onto that road, it's in the gutter. So that, makes, that keeps things quite pretty exciting. But, yeah, I think you've just got to bite your time and – see what you can do within the last kilometre. And the, t- the team arrives with a nice old-fashioned split team. You've got three climbers, yourself and your your two Aussie pals, Storer and Henley, and then you've got three sprinter slash fast men, uh, and then you've got Frohlinger probably to do all the work for everybody all day long. Uh, how does the balance feel in the team? Um, no, it's good. I mean, I've never had a a team where uh, I've never been away with a group of guys on this team that it doesn't feel like a, you know, a good mix. Um, but obviously, yeah, it is a bit when you've got days that you're going to be 100% focused on the sprint days and then a little bit of, well, 99% focused on the sprint days and then like in the back of their mind, oh, we have to keep an eye on, an eye on GC and stuff as well. Um, it does make it a bit hard on what guys you're going to burn um, to help the sprinters and then, um, you know, what you're going to do to keep GC guys safe and stuff. So, um, but I don't, I don't think it'll be too bad. Yeah. You mentioned the heat. Now, last year it was like 40 degrees. I mean, I can only imagine yeah. what that kind of feels like. I don't think I've ever, I've ever had 40 degrees in my life. You had Haas, one of the local riders get heat exhaustion and drop out the, the GC picture. When normally we think it's the the Europeans who would probably get that. I mean, what what is that like? What is it like riding forty degree heat, going up like eight percent climb? How how can you put it into words? It's like riding if you sat a hair dryer in front of you being on the stationary trainer, and just rode into that. <laughs> it's, it's it's really pretty incredible. Just like the feeling of you're like oh, shit, I'm thirsty. You take a drink. By the time your bidding's back in your cage, you're thirsty again. Like, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty, and, but, and also also in the bunch, you see so many guys suffering. Like, if you get to a, like, we have to ride, 
it was quite easy last year just because of how hot it was because no one had the capability to ride hard in that heat. So the brake rode slow, the bunch rode slow, and, you know, if you got to a little rise in the bunch and you hit, like, I don't know, 300 watts or something like that, you'd already see guys starting to come back into the bunch because they were just already on the limit so much. So, yeah, it really... It, uh, it really has a massive impact on the race, but I don't think we're going to get any days like that this year looking at the long-term forecast, but yeah, we'll see. I wouldn't mind if we do. I don't mind. I'm pretty okay with the heat. I spent a lot of time in it, but we'll see. And, and do you think there is an advantage for the Australian riders when it's hot? Yeah. Just you're used oh, to training in it and riding most, in it? Most of them, yeah. I mean, the guys that... The Aussies that aren't really in Australia that much anymore, I, I can imagine they probably struggle a bit more with it cause, just because they're not used to it. But for yeah, guys like myself that have been in a roll off season and we've had a good chance to train in it, and like we'll go out any day in it, you know, um, you're pretty used to it. So I, I think it's a big help. And we mentioned Richie Port there, who is riding. Uh, he crashed in the Tour de France, he rode Welter. Uh, just to kind of get round and get some kind of kilometres in the legs. He always starts hot in Australia, despite the fact he's only won it once, which is one of those weird things. Looking aside, yeah. for, aside from Richie, who who do you see as kind of like the, the big guys here? Um, it really is hard to say, yeah, because the, just because of the time of year and you haven't seen... Um, obviously, you know who, who's good. In, you, you, have, you know the uh, like the Aussie guys that are good after nationals and stuff. Um, well, for the guys that did it, but yeah, I think guy, well, yeah, guys like Impy and uh, uh, Hass and Jay McCarthy and those sorts of riders. I think they're always going to be hard. They're they're always going to be hard to beat just because they have that. They have the massive climbing ability on those on these shorter climbs and then it's going to be hard to beat him in the finish now i was looking a bit at your stats so you're still 23 you've now done yep. two grand tours and three monuments that's quite that's quite a lot eh? yeah no i'm happy with it i've had uh, yeah the past two seasons have been really good um I've yeah, obviously making it through my first screen tour was a big a big deal and big relief and yeah then to to get the Giro was well done so but um no it's all gone well I've racked up a lot of days and a lot of experience and teams after me yeah and you got a contract extension and I mean life is good yeah life's really good that's exactly right no. Looking at yourself in this race, you've mentioned that you've kind of been focused on it through the winter without putting too much pressure on yourself. You know, what what are you looking for out of this race for you? Um, to be honest, anywhere in the in the in the top ten uh, overall I'd be quite happy with. Um, I've never never gotten into there before. I've come pretty close last year, but it really come down to time bonuses and, and, and positions and stuff like that. So, yeah, that that would just be – I'd be happy with that and just to be able to, um, yeah, have a bit of an impact on a race and, and be up there in the finish as well. Yeah, I mean, look, looking at last season, you carried some good form. Tour of Britain, I think you were – was it ninth on GC overall, which was a good effort. So if you can kind of maintain that throughout the winter, which I'm sure you have – Top ten, I think, would be a, a a good kind of goal for yourself, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it, I think it's possible, and yeah, I've, you know, done the work and whatnot. So yeah, all being well, I think it's it should be possible. Well, Chris, thank you very much for giving up your time to come on. Uh, what I would say is, if you've enjoyed this preview, can you give us a thumbs up or subscribe? Also, you might be aware that I've got a podcast on now. If you go to Cycling Mo, your Cycling Informant, you'll find that on iTunes. Chris, all the best in the race. I hope you get that top 10. Thanks, mate. Good to talk to you.